Bruce Eight, the first edition. Good evening. Thanks for joining us at 5.30 for this first edition. I'm Gene Petriello. Topping our news at 5.30, a 20-year-old Newcastle man makes his initial appearance in Kennebec County Superior Court this morning following his arrest for murder and last week's slaying of a young woman in Wayne. John A. Oki of Newcastle, appearing in an orange prison jumpsuit and with his hands and legs in restraints, was ordered held without bail pending a hearing. He's charged in the July 10th slaying of a 19-year-old Alexandria Mills, whose body was found by her father in her home in Wayne. Other than yes or no responses to Justice Donald Martin's questioning and reading of his rights, Oki had nothing to say. Oki was arrested yesterday at an uncle's home in East Booth Bay. Monday night, police were called to Oki's home in mid-coast town of Newcastle, where they found the body of his 59-year-old father, John S. Oki. State police say they are in the early stages of their investigation into his father's death, but the case is considered a homicide. In other news from around the state, a Palmyra man charged with murder and the killing of his girlfriend's 13-year-old son has changed his plea to not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. 39-year-old Todd Curry changed his plea yesterday in Somerset County Superior Court. He is charged with shooting Anthony Tucker multiple times to the head last November outside his home. Governor John Baldacci has formally asked the Bush administration for federal aid to help Oxford County recover from storm damage. State requests include financial assistance for debris removal and emergency protective measures. And officials at Bangor International Airport say American Eagle has told local employees it'll end service in the Bangor market starting this November. Airport officials say American Eagle, with four to six daily departures from Bangor, has about a 20% share of the Bangor market, with about 85,000 passengers annually. Firefighters and first responders from Maine who sprang to action to help the Gulf Coast after Hurricane Katrina got a personal thank you this week. Kelly Pearson of our Bangor affiliate has those details. August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina strikes Louisiana, flooding most of the city of Slidell, just 20 miles north of New Orleans. Most of our guys were, you know, a little overwhelmed with the fact that they were having to take care of uh, their own responsibilities, trying to find out how much damage they had to their homes, trying to get their families to a safe place. But Bill McGinnis, battalion chief with the St. Tammany Fire Department, knew help wouldn't be far behind. Soon firefighters from across the country, including Bangor, were on their way. Bruce Johnson was one of them. I was totally amazed at uh, just the amount of devastation and the completeness of some areas where there was absolutely nothing that resembled a house. Johnson and the other firefighters worked 48-hour shifts, covering fires and car accidents, but it was the days off that were the most Rewarding. We were going to uh, the firefighters' homes uh, that had damage. Uh, we were cutting out the sheetrock, ripping out the insulation, helping them re-sheetrock the houses, re-insulate them, replace wiring, ripping up floor tiles, pulling out sim, whatever they required. And when they got there, they never complained. They never shied away. It didn't matter what it was, what we asked them to do, they did it. And. It was like having part of your family there. McGinnis presented the Bangor Fire Department with a plaque to say thank you for everything its members did during the days and weeks following Hurricane Katrina. But McGinnis says that's just a small token for saving hundreds of lives. I mean, I don't know how you can tell somebody thank you enough for what these guys did. Kelly Pearson, WABI TV5 News, Bangor. A New Brunswick politician says Atomic Energy of Canada Limited is prepared to lead and pay for a feasibility study on a proposal to build a second nuclear reactor in the province. Liberal lawmaker Paul Zed says Federal Natural Resource Minister Gary Lunn has told him that Atomic Energy is prepared to join NB Power, the province's electric utility, in studying the potential for a second reactor at Point Le Pro. AECL built New Brunswick's existing can-do reactor there in 1983 and is involved in its current refurbishment of the plant. New Brunswick Energy Minister Jack Keir says he has discussed a feasibility study with AECL and other groups around the world and, will de and a decision will be made before the end of the summer. The round-the-clock debate over the president's Iraq policy ended with defeat for the Democrats, but they vow this isn't the end. Meanwhile, the Bush administration dispatched a top aide to the president for one-on-one -on -one meetings with lawmakers, hoping to sell them on the Iraq strategy. Susan Roberts reports from Washington. After forcing the Senate into an all-night debate over the war in Iraq, the Democrats lost their battle. 
the motion is not agreed to. The measure would have required President Bush to withdraw most U.S. troops by the end of April, leaving Democrats vow they won't give up their fight to change course in Iraq. We want to be loyal to the soldiers who are in battle. And that means starting to bring them home. But Republicans say if this bill had passed, the consequences would have been too great. It would spread like wildfire through Iraq to our enemy first. Hang in there. If we can make it to May, we're going to turn the corner. But the Bush administration knows that patience is running thin on Capitol Hill. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice met privately with several lawmakers, making the case to give President Bush's troop surge more time to work. A message echoed a short time later at the White House. The troops are there to create greater security conditions, and so far there's evidence that they're having some success. The commander-in-chief has made it clear he'll veto any bill setting a deadline for troop withdrawal, and he won't rethink his Iraq strategy until mid-September at the earliest, when the military releases its report detailing conditions on the ground three months after the troop surge reached full strength. Susan Roberts, CBS News, Washington. There's still more first edition on your way. Ted's up next with a gloomy weather forecast. Hopefully it'll be nice coming up after tonight. And these stories coming your way at 6. With Holton's Bicentennial fast approaching, we'll tell you about a POW camp that was once headquartered here. I'm Dick Palm, and coming up on the evening edition at 6, I'll have more. The revival of an old tradition is sending one of Rooster County Farms potatoes coast to coast. Join us at 6 for the story on these special spuds. You're not dreaming. McDonald's Double Quarter Pounder with Cheese is the real thing. Twice the beefy, cheesy goodness. Why would a California congressman spend millions of your tax dollars on a neighborhood on Capitol Hill? He's not going to like what we learned. Tonight on the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric. The Maine Potato Blossom Festival is proudly celebrating 60 years. The county tradition returns to friendly Fort Fairfield July 17th through the 22nd. As always, there are events for the entire family. See our popular Potato Blossom Queen pageants, a huge street dance, the return of the traveling band, and of course our gigantic parade and fireworks. For a full listing of events, please call the Fort Fairfield Chamber of Commerce. The 60th annual Maine Potato Blossom Festival is returning to Fort Fairfield and we hope to see you there. Start your day with New Source 8 and Tim Hortons. We're giving you a chance to win two large coffees and a dozen donuts just for watching the Morning Edition. Send us your name, address, and phone number and tune in to New Source 8's The Morning Edition right here on WAGM. Hi, I'm Randy from North Country Auto. I'm really proud that North Country Auto has become the largest car organization in Northern Maine. The formula has really been quite simple. Just provide the best auto buying experience there is. From the best selection, to the best price, to the best financing, and most importantly, the best staff. You see, at North Country Auto, it isn't just a slogan. We really do want to be your friend in the car business. I invite you to stop by one of our North Country Auto locations. Have a cup of coffee or something cold to drink and experience the North Country Auto difference. Weather brought to you by North Country Auto. And welcome back. Meteorologist Ted Shapiro is here. And yesterday, Ted, I got stuck in a thunderstorm in Caribou on my story. Today, it started raining at the airport when I was there. So what else is going to happen? Showers and <laughs> thunderstorms at times is what's going to happen. Let me quiz you here. When oh, does geez. it start to feel humid outside, dew point wise? Do you remember that one? Up here in northern Maine? Yeah. I'm going to say 55. 55, it's a little sticky. 60, it becomes noticeably humid. That's where we are in most areas right now. That's where we're going to stay for the next couple of days. Let's see what's going on in Presque Isle. There's that dew point right on the cusp of 60 degrees and it has been quite breezy this afternoon. Winds at last check at Presque Isle gusting to 24 miles per hour and they've been in that neighborhood at both Frenchville, Caribou and other towns as well. Temperatures are in the low 70s. They're not in the low 70s though down at Vostok, Antarctica. 108 degrees below zero.
and that location holds the global record. Let's check it out from this side. 128.6 degrees below zero on the Fahrenheit scale. So that's a number of note that I wanted to show. Now where it's been sunnier in Maine today, it has been warmer. Frenchville 76 at the moment, Caribou 73, and we just saw Presque Isle also in the low 70s, but it's been cloudy and showery down to the south. Holton's had bouts of showers today, whereas Caribou and Presque Isle have just had a passing shower. So gloomier and cooler down to the south. Dew points, remember last night we pointed out that wall of 60 degree plus dew points that was well off to the southwest. Well, we said it would make inroads to the northeast. There's Holton at 60 and again, Presque Isle, Caribou, and even up in the valley headed that way and will stay that way for the next couple of days. A weak area of low pressure, this is the one a couple of days ago that was out in the Great Lakes, tracked across Pennsylvania, now moving out through the Gulf of Maine, thus the more concentrated showers to the south. However, at the same time, there is a front over Quebec and that is helping generate showers and storms for northern sections. One fairly potent storm right now near Clayton Lake, let's let this loop run through and you'll see it pop up. There we go, right around the Clayton Lake area. That's the most intense part of the cell right there. And again, more showery down in southern areas. So scattered showers and storms is the theme tonight. They're not widespread at the moment. That's why we're calling them scattered. I think that's the way it's going to stay. Humidity is going to be the theme as well. Tomorrow, I don't think we have showers and storms in the morning, but they develop in the afternoon as our next weather system in a series in a series of seemingly endless ones, heads our way. Warm up still on tap for next week. We'll talk about that at six. Scattered showers and storms, breezy early, wind settling down a bit, couple degrees either side of 60. Tonight for tomorrow, low 70s. Scattered showers and storms, mainly afternoon. We keep the humidity tomorrow and tomorrow night. And tomorrow night, the showers and storms should be more widespread than they will be tomorrow afternoon. Well, I just wrote that down, Vostok, Antarctica. Now, I complained when it was below zero up here. 108 below zero. That's your kind of weather, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm going right down there. Book my next vacation there, Ted. Thanks a lot. Let's yeah. check in now with Rainey, who's in the newsroom with a preview of sports. Rainey? Thanks, Gene. A busy day in the county. The Potato Blossom Festival events continued in several golf tournaments. We had our cameras at five events today, three golf tournaments and two Potato Blossom Festival competitions. Coming up at six, we'll tell you about the county champions. That, of course, in softball, we go in the pool with the uh, swim meet. And on the golf courses in Mars Hill, Limestone, and Caribou, that's all at six. Gene is more after this. Get into America's best-selling truck during Ford's model year clearance. Now get 0% financing plus $2,007 cash back on every Ford truck, including F-150, the most capable truck in its class. Super Duty, the leader in total quality. Ranger, with the best gas mileage of any truck in America. Get 0% plus $2,007 cash back on every Ford truck during Ford's model year clearance. Lockwood and Presque Isle is a name you can trust with a long-standing tradition of quality parts and service in Aroostook County. Carrying a full line of harvester and windrower belted chains for all Lockwood and Thomas equipment. Lockwood also offers AgCam monitoring systems, new replacement halogen lights with safety lenses, sprockets, rollers, and special pricing on all our roller chain. See why our customers keep coming back season after season. Lockwood, simply the best. Moms love having their babies in the nursery at Cary. Anna Ruth was born on May 30th in the Cary Nursery. Anna lives in Caribou. Gwendolyn Eva was born on June 3rd in the nursery at Cary. Gwendolyn lives in Caribou. Diane Lynn was born on June 4th at Cary Medical Center. Diane lives in Island Falls. Elizabeth Jean was born on June 5th in the Cary Nursery. Elizabeth lives in Mapleton. Cary Medical Center, the quality health care center. Freak accident. Eight months pregnant. The whole thing went right through my chest, and I didn't realize it was sticking out the back. A simple visit to the ATM. Give me your money. By the time I looked up, he had stuck the gun to my head. He's still out there. Still out there. Then, in the clutches of a rapist. Wait, this story has a twist. Next, Oprah. Weekdays at 4 p.m.
In national news, the death toll could reach 195 in Brazil's deadliest air crash. The jet with more than 100 people on board overran the runway yesterday, then tried to take off again, crashing into a gas station and then into a cargo building. As Drew Levinson reports, the tragedy unfolded on a runway plagued with problems. TAM Airlines Flight 3054 ended in a fiery crash after trying to land in a driving rainstorm at the Sao Paulo airport. The pilot apparently tried to take off again. The Airbus 320 cleared the airport fence in a busy highway, but then slammed into a gas station and a cargo terminal. The situation was very bad, this man says, and the firemen couldn't enter the plane. Temperatures inside were said to reach 1,000 degrees, leaving no chance for anyone to survive. As waiting relatives clamored for a passenger list and more information, the safety of the runway, which has been called dangerously short, is once again being questioned. A day earlier, two planes slipped off the runway in rainy weather, and in 1996, a plane went down after takeoff, killing all 96 on board. Early this year, a federal court banned large jets from using the airport, but an appeals court overruled because of the economic impact. Pilots say the main runway is like landing on an aircraft carrier and is especially risky since the airport is surrounded by heavily populated neighborhoods. The problem runway had also recently been resurfaced, but had not yet been grooved, which would have provided better braking traction in the rain. The president of Brazil declared three days of national mourning for the nation's worst air disaster as TAM Airlines offered condolences to the families. Drew Levinson, CBS News. Drug test results are in for wrestler Chris Benoit, and investigators still cannot say whether steroids played a part in the deaths of Benoit and his family members. But one former pro wrestler says he's not surprised by the test results. Well, I don't think there were really any major surprises other than the fact that with Daniel, the little boy, they found Xanax in his system. But as far as Chris is concerned, uh, there were no major surprises there. Painkillers, uh, pain medication, and steroids. As a matter of fact, over 10 times the level that a normal man would have in his system uh, were found in his body. So um, I don't think there's any surprises there at all. Some experts believe steroids can cause paranoia, depression, and violent outbursts. Now, Georgia's top medical examiner says there is no consensus on this issue, but also says there was no evidence to show the drugs played a role in the death of Benoit's family. Well, we've been hearing about it all week. Dow 14,000. Did it finally get above there and stay there at the end of the day? At the end of the day? Let's find out. Here's today's Bloomberg after the Bell Report. The stock market suffered its worst day in a week. Stocks fell after Intel's earnings report fueled concerns that the profit outlook for technology companies is too high. Signs that banks will be saddled with losses from bad loans also pressured the market. And evidence that competition is hurting profits at Yahoo and Pfizer added to the market's retreat. And here's the final tally. The Dow fell 53 points, the S&P giving back three points, and the Nasdaq losing almost 13. Airline stocks were on the radar. American Airlines parent company AMR posted its highest net income since 2000. And Delta Airlines also turned in its first profitable quarter since flying out of bankruptcy court. Finally, some drama ahead of Saturday's release of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Scholastic may seek legal action against distributor Levy Home Entertainment, claiming it mailed the final installment out ahead of the official release date. That's the latest in business from the New York Stock Exchange. I'm Deborah Kostrin with the Bloomberg After the Bell Report. For each of us, there's a moment of discovery. We understand that all of life is elemental. And as we marvel at element, bonding with element, we soon realize that when you add the human element to the equation, everything changes. Suddenly, all of chemistry illuminates humanity, and all of humanity illuminates chemistry. The human element. Nothing is more fundamental. Nothing more elemental. 
WAGM-TV and Miller's Discount Stores would like to congratulate all of the Golden Apple Award recipients in the past school year. These teachers have been recognized due to their outstanding contributions to their students in schools from around the county. Congratulations once again, and we look forward to receiving more nominations in the upcoming school year. Now available at Miller's, Carhartt for Women, the ultimate in women's workwear comfort, Carhartt. At everyday low prices, now at Miller's in Caribou and Fort Kent. The Maine Potato Blossom Festival is proudly celebrating 60 years. The county tradition returns to Friendly Fort Fairfield July 17th to the 22nd. As always, there are events for the entire family. Check out the street dance, antique tractor pulls, family fun day, a huge parade, and of course, the fireworks. And all these businesses welcome you to Friendly Fort Fairfield for the summer's biggest event, the 60th annual Maine Potato Blossom Festival. The Castle Inn in Perth Andover, New Brunswick is the perfect place for travelers in all seasons. Overlooking the St. John River, the Castle Inn is ideal for family reunions, birthday parties, and especially weddings. Enjoy savory four-course meals starting at $30 or relax in the outdoor hot tub. Spend time with old friends or make new ones in their fully licensed bar with their famous wing nights on Thursdays and Fridays. Call the Castle Inn to make reservations or log on to castleinn.ca for more information and driving directions. You don't need a passport yet to come to the Castle Inn. Women, hope, women hoping to prevent a return of breast cancer don't need to go overboard on fruits and vegetables. A government study released this week shows there's no advantage to extra servings of fruits and vegetables compared to the recommended five a day. The seven-year study included more than 3,000 breast cancer survivors, but researchers say none of the women lost weight on either diet. Now, some, some experts think weight loss and exercise should be the next frontier for cancer prevention. Low birth weight babies may face immediate challenges, but a recent study suggests those babies may develop problems as adults as both troubled health and troubled finances. And big babies may face problems later in life as well. Dr. Sean Kniff reports. Olivia Sutton is four years old. She's beautiful and brainy, but she was also a low birth weight baby, born prematurely. Olivia was 28 weeks when she was born, two and a half pounds. Thanks to modern medicine, preemies are no longer medical miracles. But new studies suggest the exact weight of a baby at birth may be a strong predictor of school performance, annual income as an adult, cancer risk, and overall health even decades later. A new report studied 35 years of data and found babies weighing less than 5.5 pounds were 33 percent more likely to drop out of high school, made 15 percent less income as adults, and had the health level of someone who was 12 years older. That's not a surprise to Dr. Richard Auerbach, chief of staff at Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital. Low birth weight babies do have problems later in life. But other studies have found as adults, heavy babies may also pay a heavy price. Heavy babies babies are more likely to become overweight or obese adults. And one study found it increased the risk of adult cancers. I guess one of the theories is that fatter babies have more cells that can become cancerous, so that increases their, their risk. But good medicine and good parenting can overcome most of these obstacles. That's something Olivia's mom knows well. He just wanted to be happy. Now Olivia's four years old, 44 pounds, and looking forward to a bright future. Dr. Sean Kniff, CBS News. Sugar is the new oil. Billions of dollars. For Alex Vega, the only thing more important than the family business... You're going to work your way up in this business just like everybody else. And then you can marry Rebecca. I love her, Dad. ...is the family. The really great ones make the hard place look easy. Hey, Dad. Jimmy Smith's returns to television. Alex, I'm pregnant. I love you. ...in one of the most anticipated new series. Excuse me, everyone. A toast to my brother. Kane, Tuesdays this fall on CBS. Stay focused for the next 60 seconds. It's all the time I have to tell you the truth about HD television. The truth your cable company doesn't want you to hear. Cable wants you to believe they're keeping up with HD capacity. They're not. But DirecTV is. And soon DirecTV will be offering up to 150 HD channels. That's three times more than cable. Call now for the best in HD. DirecTV also has more sports in HD than cable. And with DirecTV, every channel is 100% digital picture and sound. Do you know what else? Packages start at only $29.99 per month. Compare that to your cable bill. There are no startup costs, no equipment to buy, and professional installation is free. 
Call now. You also get a free HD receiver or direct TV DVR upgrade from America's number one satellite provider. Time's up. Make the call. Take control of your future at Pierre School of Cosmetology with career training in one of four great health and beauty careers. Careers that are in demand and offer flexible, full or part-time work, plus great income potential. The choice is yours. Hairstyling, nail technology, skin care, and massage therapy. Great careers, each of which you can learn in less than a year at Pierre School of Cosmetology. Contact us today at 1-800-966-0619 or at pierreschool.com. In tonight's e-block, Giselle, Giselle Bündchen is the world's top model by a big stretch according to the newly released list of biggest earners in the field by Forbes.com. The Brazilian supermodel has raked in $33 million in the last 12 months, more than three times what the world number two Kate Moss earned. Bündchen split with Victoria's Secret last year and with her boyfriend Leonardo DiCaprio, but she continued making her millions with more contracts than any model in the world. Also making the top five are Heidi Klum and fellow Victoria's Secret regular Adriana Lima and Alessandro Ambrosio. Lucky the sun's out in East Texas this week. It's helping a race from, around, from Round Rock, Texas to New York. It's called the Dell Winston Solar Car Challenge. Tracy Walter caught up with them as they stopped in Henderson, Texas. It may look more like a spaceship than any car you see out on the road, but don't be fooled because this solar car may just be pulling up next to you. Yeah, we've got some awkward stairs, you know, not too many people know what's going on. They, they've kind of wondered what the car was all about and what it is. It's a car that runs solely on the sun's rays. Whenever the sun hits the array, which is the solar cells, it generates energy to run our motor. And then if it's kind of cloudy, then we just run off the energy stored in our battery bank. These high schoolers are competing in a nine-day race, driving the solar cars more than 2,000 miles from Round Rock, Texas to Newburgh, New York. And at the end of the nine days, the team that's able to acquire the most miles over those days is declared the winner. The team from Houston, Mississippi, let me test theirs out. They told me this thing can go up to 78 miles per hour. Oh, KLTV! But I didn't want to push my luck in a parking lot following a cop. Okay, I don't want to wreck this thing. All fun aside, the students say they do it to raise awareness about the importance of solar energy. Our generation is becoming more and more aware of the effects of global warming, pollution and such, and it's going to affect us later on. So we need to take a stand and, uh, and find alternative energy sources and put them to use. And if this car is the wave of the future, then a lot of East Texans I spoke with say they'll be looking out for it. That would be a lot cheaper to drive than having to pull over and get gas all the time. That's a sweet car. Have a great night, everyone. Hi, I'm Potato Blossom Queen Gabrielle Bowker. Where can you see awesome bands, floats, antique tractors, politicians, and even the Shriner cars and clowns? Easy. It's the Potato Blossom Festival's gigantic parade, Saturday, July 21st at 1 p.m. in Fort Fairfield. Christine Roy was homeschooled in the St. John Valley and through the University of Maine at Presque Isle found her passion for art, a passion that has shaped her life. I began to connect it almost to life and how we all have to go through different processes to almost become like that vessel that emerges from the kiln. The professors here all had a unique way of challenging and making me grow. Find your passion and future at UM Presque Isle. It was the school for me. Take these to Rogers and Lewis. Newman's own organic diced coffee from McDonald's. Now even harder to resist in vanilla, hazelnut, or our new limited time flavor, caramel. King's Gardener on the Johnson Road in Presque Isle has an amazing array of trees, shrubs, produce, and over 150 varieties of perennials. Log on to thekingsgardener.net for more information and directions. Kayak Country is at their new location on the West Limestone Road in Fort Fairfield. Try out the entire selection of kayaks and canoes in the new demo pond at Kayak Country. 472-0700. Get your name out there with WAGM-TV. Call for a sales representative today because the success of your business is our business. 764-4461. David Ortiz and the 
first place Red Sox take on the White Sox. This week on Fox Saturday Baseball. Who will be evicted? I don't want to go home. Find out live on Big Brother CBS Thursday. Every Medical Monday, we bring you the latest medical news and developments that impact your health. Everything from diet, fitness, lifestyle, and nutrition to surgical and non-invasive innovations. We'll examine a gamut of health trends and hear from local doctors giving their insights on a variety of issues. Join me every Medical Monday on the evening edition and again on the late edition to learn what health matters most. Medical Monday, brought to you by the Aroostook Medical Center, your partner in health. You're watching WAGM TV 8 Presque Isle, Maine. This is WAGM TV Presque Isle, Maine, and you're watching News Source 8, the evening edition. Good evening, everyone. I'm John Gulliver. A Massachusetts woman is dead after falling into a propeller while her husband was docking the boat late yesterday afternoon in the Aroostook County town of Orient. According to Inland Fisheries and Wildlife spokesman Mark Lottie, 65-year-old Jeannie Glover of Beverly was killed when she fell off a 17-foot powerboat while it was being docked at a friend's house on East Grand Lake. Lottie said the woman was attempting to tie the boat to the dock at about 5.35 p.m. when she fell into the inboard-outboard engine's propeller. She was pronounced dead at the scene when an emergency response crew arrived a short time later. Orient is just north of Amity and south of Danforth. Two of Maine's largest environmental groups are throwing their support behind a $100 million wind power project that calls for 38 turbines to be erected on Stetson Mountain in Washington County. In separate announcements, Maine Audubon and the Natural Resources Council of Maine said they are endorsing the proposal by UPC Wind Management. If constructed today, the project would be New England's largest wind energy facility, generating an estimated 57 megawatts of power annually. The Land Use Regulation Commission tentatively is scheduled to hold a public hearing and a work session on the application on August 7th and 8th. Stetson Mountain is a ridge line that runs for about six miles along the border between northern Washington County and Penobscot County between Danforth and Springfield. UPC Wind says it chose the site for strong, steady winds in a remote location with an existing network of logging roads. The Presque Isle Rotary Club revives their tradition lost in the potato fields for almost 50 years. Julia Dunn reports on the comeback of the Governor's Potato Plot Project. They called me up and asked if I would uh, be willing to do it, and, uh, and I said yes. Uh, I, I'd be pleased to do it. It looks like a good crop, right, as it is right now. Stewart Farms' new claim to fame will be their spuds heard round the nation. Each of these potatoes' destination point could be anywhere in the United States at a unique location, the governor's office. In an effort to promote Maine's potato industry, the Presque Isle Rotary Club opted to bring back an old tradition, the governor's potato plot project. The crop is uh, growing exceptionally well. Uh, uh, we were a little bit dry, but uh, plenty of rain of late, and uh, things are growing real well. I'm digging some early round whites for the uh, roadside stand. A special crop of potatoes will be harvested this fall by Rotarians to be shipped to every governor in the United States. They're sizing up real well looking good. Although Stewart doesn't know what Governor John Baldacci's preference of potato is, or all 50 governors for that matter, he chose superior potatoes for their early maturity and all-purpose use. Stewart says he is happy to help resurrect the project. The last time it was done was in 1959. Gets our product out, uh, you know, to the different uh, states and, uh, and uh, show what quality we, we grow here in the state of Maine. And uh, we've always been known for uh, superior potatoes, so uh, we you know, I'd like to get back and uh, let people know we're still, you know, that uh, we're still raising the best. Julia Dunn, News Source 8. From a farm giving Governor Baldacci his potatoes to Gene Petrello reporting on how farmers and local groups are looking to promote good and healthy foods to young kids. With nutrition and a healthy lifestyle in mind on Wednesday, the Aroostook County Action Program hosted the first of five family farm festivals in Presque Isle. We have two local farmers that are here on site to um, allow the families to purchase the fresh fruits and vegetables with the coupons that we're giving out today. Those coupons are being handed out to families involved in the Women, Infants and Children Program, or WIC. To promote fresh fruits and vegetables, healthy diets. Also involved in the event are local school-age kids who have some face painting artistic talents of their own. Why is face painting your favorite part of today's events? 
Because I really like art and it's fun to get creative and do a lot of things with paint. How much fun are you having putting paint on other people's faces? A lot of fun. A lot of fun? <laughs> How about you? Um, pretty much the same. It's really fun. I mean, I don't get to do that a lot. From the kids painting people's faces to those participating in the WIC program, today's Farm Festival Day is a major benefit to all those involved. I can try to take as, as much as I can for my child, like nutritional stuff and how he's going to grow and everything like that. Benefited me because I get to feed my um, children fresh fruits and vegetables from the food that they have here. How much fun are you having out here today? Hold one. Uh, Jean Petriello, News Source 8. There will be four more ACAP family, family Farm Festival Days, Wednesday, July 25th, Wednesday, August 1st, Thursday, August 9th, and Wednesday, September 5th. On all four days, activities will begin at 9 a.m. and continue until 4 in the afternoon. The Bangor International Airport announced today that a low-cost airline is coming to town. Officials say Las Vegas-based Allegiant Air will be offering non-spop service to Orlando, Florida, effective November 7th. The flights on Wednesday and Saturday will be year-round with an introductory fare of $89 one way. The news comes a day after American Eagle announced it was pulling out of Bangor this November. American Eagle provided four to six departures per day, most of them going to Boston and one going to New York's LaGuardia Airport. With the town of Holton celebrating its bicentennial this year, people are looking back at the Shire Town's history. One of those is our own Dick Palm. Not many people are aware of it, but from 1944 to 1946, during World War II, Holton was home to its own POW camp. It was thanks in part to a shortage of labor, not only here in Aroostook County, but the entire United States, due to the high volume of people enlisting in the service, as well as being drafted. The government was having to send food and so forth to uh, England and to other areas where there was POWs uh, had, had been captured. They decided that to bring them over here and let them be uh, do the work, do some of the work, and they were paid for it. Bell says the POWs were paid the sum of 80 cents a day, which coincidentally was the equivalent pay of a private in the German army. Bell adds the number of war prisoners swelled greatly during the two-year period. We had as high as 3,000 here. Holton was sort of the headquarters for the whole state of Maine. And uh, they, they came here to Holton, and then they were farmed out to uh, uh, pulpwood operations and potatoes and, then of course, the peas and so forth. Bell explains the POWs were put to work in the agriculture and timber industries to help out in the war effort. The camp was located on what had been the Army Air Corps base on the U.S.-Canada border. And despite it being wartime, Holton's economy flourished. Oh, it was booming. It was booming. I mean, we had buses running from here at the airport, and, and we had two theaters, and uh, just everybody had a job, and they were just begging you to go to work, and that sort of thing. According to Bell, some POWs actually wanted to remain in Holton after the war. Four of those former prisoners returned to the Shire town a few years ago and were welcomed with open arms. And when they came back, we had a three-day celebration. We gave them honorary citizen citizenship to the town of Holton, had all the counselors sign it and so forth. The favor was returned when Bell and two others were invited for a reciprocal visit to Germany where the curator said she and her companions were treated like royalty. Dick Palm, New Source 8. And over the next month, News Source 8 will look deeper into Holton, its history, its people, and its culture. There's still much more Evening Edition coming up. Ted will have the complete weather forecast. And coming up after the break, how some people locally are helping Haiti. Stay with us. It's called target marketing, and for the tobacco industry, the target is youth. Young smokers are critical to the future of their business, so the tobacco companies use all their resources to study children in depth. They're tasting clothes, music, movies, their hangouts, their attitudes, learning every detail to capture a new customer. Their target, your child. Tobacco never quits. Learn how to prevent tobacco use. Visit TobaccoNeverQuits.com. It's Ford's 
Ford's model year clearance. The best time to drive a Ford SUV. With 0% financing plus 2007 cash back on every Ford SUV, including Expedition, Explore, and Escape. Subway Scrabble. Instantly win food or collect letters and play online to win trips, cash, and other prizes. Subway. Eat fresh. Here at Valley Home Health Services and Aroostook Home Health Services, we're pleased to announce that we are now offering free blood pressure checks by our nursing staff the first Wednesday of every month at all three of our locations. Don't miss these free opportunities to keep your blood pressure in check. Get into America's best-selling truck during Ford's model year clearance. Now get 0% financing plus 2007 cash back on every Ford truck, including F-150, Super Duty, and Ranger. here at approximately 2.30 a.m. Friday morning. But when he returned on his rounds at 6 a.m., it was gone. Pulled up from the sidewalk in what police believe to be more than a one-man operation. Police hope to catch the culprits through surveillance footage from Main Street Skycam, which looks southbound, and a shop camera facing northbound. These images taken Friday morning at around 4.45 a.m. point to a black 2004 Econoline van with New Hampshire license plates. Two individuals are seen attempting to lift the bench. Police believe they may have been the vandals. You know very well somebody knows something, and, and we would so love some uh, participation with either, you know, just bring it back or put it in the park and we'll find it if somebody does have it. For Bowyer, who is so invested in trying to get downtown Presque Isle back on its feet, incidents like this are steps backwards for what the Town Revitalization Committee is trying to do. When people come to town, you want your Main Street to look good. If you put flowers out, people realize that the downtown is an exciting place to be and when people come through and chop the heads off, it gets a little bit discouraging. But a park bench is like a lot different than tugging a flower out of a bucket. The Downtown Revitalization Committee, in collaboration with the Presque Isle Police Department, are offering a $100 reward for anyone with information. At the moment, the committee is unable to fund the purchase of a new bench, but hopes these images and help from the public will help reclaim the old one. It's just kind of sad. You would want people to embrace, you know, their community. Julia Dunn, News Source 8. And anyone with information on a black 2004 Econoline van with New Hampshire plates 986118 are asked to call the police, Prescott Police Department at 764-4476 on your screen. Two weeks from today, Maine voters will have a chance to approve or reject the first part of a three-part borrowing package worth $295 million. The first June 12th ballot question, if approved, would raise just under $113 million for transportation projects. Possible uses include improvements to the highways and bridges, airports, public transit facilities, ferry and port facilities, and bicycle and pedestrian trails. Advocates say approval of that bond issue would make the state eligible for more than $260 million in federal and other matching funds. In Ashland now, Ashland's police chief will be heading out to town to learn more about a piece of equipment his department is getting. Here's Jamie Reilly. He reports on how this new tool will benefit the department and the community. Smaller police departments don't always have the budget to purchase some of the equipment they need. Well, what I try to do is anytime I know the grants or anything I apply to try to get this, uh, you know, any kind of equipment that I can. Um, and uh, Homeland Security has a lot of money out there. Last year, Martin received night vision goggles from the same grant and says they've already put them to use within the last year. This year, they will be receiving new thermal imaging equipment, which would have cost about $10,000, but the cost of the equipment, training, and Martin's time away are all being funded by the Homeland Security grant. Ours uh, will find and will display an image of a person, or it'll give us everything. It'll show us exactly what, it, what the object looks like. This tool can be used day or night as it can detect body heat displaying it on a monitor and can also take pictures, which can later be used as evidence. 
Martin says he can think of a nighttime shooting two years ago where it would have helped out. Someone uh, was hiding on us. We couldn't find them. Uh, we kept driving right by and they were just hiding off the, off the road. But with this thermal imager, we could have used that and seen them where in, in the dark where they would have been hiding. Martin will head down to the two-day training in New Orleans with over 700 others from around the country, including a detective from Holton on May 29th. After he successfully completes the training, the new thermal imaging equipment will arrive at the department shortly after. Jay Marie Ely, News Source 8. Downstate, more than 100 anti-war demonstrators called on state lawmakers today to support the impeachment of President Bush and Vice President Cheney, claiming to have collected signatures of support from more than 11,000 Mainers. The main committee to impeach releases a statement urging the legislature to adopt a resolution of impeachment and forward it to the U.S. House of Representatives. The statement complains of Bush administration's, de quote, deceptions in connection with the war in Iraq. Among the speakers at the noontime rally behind the State House was State Senator E. Ethan Strimling of Portland, one of a number of Democrats eyeing his party's first congressional district nomination. And May is now the deadliest month for U.S. troops in Iraq this year after 10 soldiers died north of Baghdad just on Memorial Day. Susan Roberts shows us the news comes as Baghdad is hit with a new round of bombings and kidnappings. Insurgents continue to strike civilian and U.S. military targets with devastating results in Iraq. On Memorial Day in Diyala province, north of Baghdad, at least 10 American soldiers died in roadside bombings and a helicopter crash. At least 112 troops have been killed in May, making this the deadliest month of the year for U.S. forces. And at least 40 Iraqis died in a pair of car bomb attacks Tuesday in Baghdad. Dozens more were injured and a mosque was reduced to rubble. President Bush predicted the number of U.S. casualties would rise when he recently ordered a massive security crackdown in and around Baghdad. Military analysts say many insurgents have fled Baghdad and U.S. troops are more exposed as they fan out in search of them. What we have is a very smart enemy that's, uh, that's moving around and they're going to places where we know we don't have high concentration of forces. Some of those forces and Iraqi police are now investigating a kidnapping from Iraq's finance ministry. Turning to news around the globe now, a depressed young mother had not shown up for work and her concerned sister went to check on her, found the door to the family's trailer locked from the inside. The sister forced her way inside and authorities in Texas say that's when she found the bodies of her sister, her 23-year-old sister, and her four small daughters hanging in a closet. The sheriff says all were dead, but an eight-month-old baby who was rescued is still alive. She's been taken to a hospital and is reported to be in good condition. Officials are treating the deaths of the woman and her three daughters as a murder-suicide. The investigation continues. The sheriff says the dead children who were five, three, and two were found hanging from nooses made of sashes and strips of clothing. In tonight's night view, we take you to Disney World's Animal Kingdom in Orlando. An apparent platform malfunction at the Collie River Rapids and Tuesday injured six people and forced officials to close the ride for the day. The ride was suddenly stopped and a platform was lowered to remove the guests off the attraction. During the process, the platform apparently malfunctioned, causing non-life-threatening injuries to six people. A ride they'll never forget, undoubtedly. Let's go to Gene standing by. What do you think about that? I wasn't watching, Sean. The New York Yankees say they will not let seven-time Cy Young Award, Award winner Roger Clemens pitch for the New York Yankees this weekend at Fenway Park. Clemens is likely to start at the Chicago White Sox game next Monday for the Yankees. The 44-year-old right-hander pitched six shutout innings for Triple A's Grant and Wilkes-Barre on Monday. Torrey said before tonight's game with Toronto that he'll stay with Ming Wong, Mike Messina, and Andy Pennant as his starters this weekend in the series at AL East leading Boston with that series just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Coming up in sports, we'll tee it up in Fredericton. We have some softball from Washburn and Fort Fairfield. And like I said, is that Sox lead getting bigger and bigger? It definitely is. All that coming up in sports, but first back to Sean. Thank you, Gene. There's still more to come on this late edition, including Ted's weather. And of course, Gene will have more in sports. And still to come, it's not old McDonald's farm, it's new. your gas, 
It can be a painful experience or a delightfully rare occurrence. It's all in the choice of car you drive. Honda, the most fuel-efficient auto company in America. Lease a 2007 Honda Accord for $199 a month for well-qualified customers. Every Medical Monday, we bring you the latest medical news and developments that impact your health. Everything from diet, fitness, lifestyle, and nutrition to surgical and non-invasive innovations. We'll examine a gamut of health trends and hear from local doctors giving their insights on a variety of issues. Join me every Medical Monday on the Evening Edition and again on the Late Edition to learn what health matters most. Medical Monday, brought to you by the Aroostook Medical Center, your partner in health. Electronic stability programs. Available rear liftgate speakers. Standard side curtain airbags. Full flat seats. And with an estimated 30 highway miles per gallon, you'll change the way you think about filling up. Now, well-qualified lessees can lease a Patriot or Compass Sport for $239 a month. National Guard. We do a lot of ice storms and snowstorms, humanitarian missions. Deployment in Iraq changed me greatly. I'm much more independent and I stand my ground a lot more than I used to. I will be going to the University of Maine in Prescott. My parents are very happy that the Guard is paying for my schooling. To wear my uniform in Maine, I feel extremely proud. Hear the story about how the Guard changed my life at 1-800-GO-GUARD.COM. Welcome back. It's time for more look at weather. And so uh, are we going to have decent weather on tap? Because if not, people are going to be mad at you. Oh, they might be. We're going to have a few showers around and then a lot of sunshine the day after tomorrow. That's no, good. no big heat like we had last week. This week, it's 46 in Presque Isle. Winds, which were quite gusty earlier, settled down across the viewing area. And the pressure's rising from 30.11. 48 in Caribou, still 52 in Frenchville, low 50s as well in Millinocket, still 60 degrees down in Augusta. Well, when you look at the satellite radar composite, you see a showers across the midsection of the country. This red box, by the way, is a tornado watch as issued by the Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma, covering northeastern Colorado and into southwestern Nebraska. But in the east, it's clear there's a lot of high pressure, a high pressure center centered over New York State and Pennsylvania. Now, last week, we had a similar setup. We had a high down in this area, clockwise flow, and it helped to pump up the heat. Well, it's going to be pretty warm, fairly close to northern New England. Boston's going to get into the 80s tomorrow, and you can see some of that warmth already at this hour. Buffalo's at 68, Richmond near 70, Chicago 77, though they're an hour earlier. And here we are in the 40s in Presque Isle. Well, here's the thing. The heat's not coming here this time around. What's going to happen is there's another high that's going to be dropping down out of Quebec. Before it gets here, we're going to have a frontal system move through. That's going to generate scattered showers tomorrow. Once it passes, by the time we get into Thursday, then we'll have that other high building down with a different air mass than the one that will be occupying this part of the country. That's why we're going to be staying in the 60s all week. Now, scattered showers does not mean an all-day rain. That's what we won't be having tomorrow. Just a few showers. Some towns won't even see any, though there is the risk of a thunder shower as well primarily down towards southern and western portions of the viewing area. That would be the most likely place. But again, scattered showers means not an all-day rain. Some towns will not see them. There they are. There's the warm high. There's the cooler high that will be influencing our weather. One more thing, tropical weather disturbance as we head late week into the weekend in the western Caribbean could bring Florida some desperately needed rainfall. Forecast details. Really pretty outside right now, gradually increasing high clouds, nearly full moon, low to mid 40s. There's those scattered showers tomorrow, mid 60s with light winds. Clear out later on tomorrow night, low 40s once again after the scattered showers tomorrow. Just a beautiful Thursday. Lots of blue sky, dazzling sunshine. We hold on to some sun Friday and Saturday. 
couple scattered showers the way it looks now late weekend and again the theme for the week no real big heat mm -hmm. that we had last week okay well there's summer events that are going on friday and saturday so that looks good for them yeah, it does. sunday we'll stay inside you there's don't have to no we don't have to unless you like them. we'll be right back just off I-95 in Holton, this is just great family dining, home-cooked food. No frills, no anything here, folks. Just get down to great eating, good homemade cooked food. $25 certificate for $17.50, good for anything on the menu at the Holton Big Stop Restaurant, Route 1 in Holton. Let me hit some of the highlights on the menu, some of the local favorites. 16-ounce fresh-cut sirloin steak, homemade meatloaf to die for, sirloin tip combo, assorted wraps, oriental chicken salad, taco salad, and I'm just touching the tip of the menu here. And they've got breakfast 24 hours a day. Save room for dessert. They have got pies to die for. Oh, that banana cream pie they have is out of this world. $25 certificate for $17.50 to the Holton Big Stop Restaurant. Route 1 just off I-95 in Holton. Women are the strength and the backbone of families, of communities. They, they're such caretakers. They, they take care of their children. So if you want to keep that household strong, you've got to take care of your body. We are the root to the growth of this world. You just need to get your yearly mammograms. It's an important part in saving your life. Do it for your family. Do it for your friends. Do it for you. To learn more, call the Maine Breast and Cervical Health Program in the Maine CDC, Department of Health and Human Services. Start your day with News Source 8 and Tim Hortons. We're giving you a chance to win two large coffees and a dozen donuts just for watching the morning edition. Send us your name, address, and phone number to WAGM TV 12 Brewer Road, Presque Isle, Maine, 04769. And watch every morning as anchor Dick Palm keeps you informed of today's local headlines. And co anchor Kara Lordson keeps you up to date with your local weather. Northern Maine's News Source, the morning edition, and Tim Hortons every weekday morning. A wide spectrum of officials and agencies met earlier this month to do some advanced planning in case of a pandemic outbreak of influenza. Dick Palm spoke to one emergency services official who attended the conference. Recently, the county's regional emergency medical services coordinator attended a pandemic tabletop exercise in Bangor, put on by the Northeastern Maine Regional Resource Center. And it gave us a uh, specific opportunity uh, to learn scenario-based uh, what resources, what other agencies we have that we can interact with, uh, and just how to pull together things so that in a disaster, whether it be pandemic or large scale, that we're more prepared. And as far as being prepared, Corbin Fields County disaster agencies are very in tune. Our Rustic Emergency Management Agency has been instrumental in putting together a uh, health, uh, uh, health care providers committee. Corbin states the committee meets every other month. It receives the latest statistics from the Center for Disease Control and also readies itself by putting things in place in the event a pandemic outbreak should occur. Corbin says the general public can also ready itself in preparation for a large-scale influenza outbreak. I think that individually we all need to uh, build kits within our homes that will allow us uh, at least uh, two to three weeks, possibly up to six weeks of uh, self-sustaining ourselves uh, and that uh, we think that can be accomplished here in Aroostook. Corbin recommends these kits include batteries, battery-operated flashlights and radios, food supplies and water. Those attending the flu conference went through a number of different exercises and scenarios. Dick Palm, News Source 8. This is JobCast, a presentation of Reno's Family Restaurant and the Career Center. A help desk specialist is needed to work in a high-volume call environment, must have strong computer skills, and strong knowledge of Microsoft Windows 2000, XP, and Office applications. Problems involve proprietary software, PCs, printers, email, voice over IP, and computer networks. A boiler utility operator is wanted, will be responsible for operating, performing general maintenance, repair and troubleshooting, boiler and refrigeration equipment at a refrigerated food processing facility, should have a state of maintenance boiler operator license and must have own hand tools. An office clerk is needed, must have experience with data entry and must possess excellent
manual and typing skills. This is a full-time position with benefits. A form carpenter is wanted. Will build, if necessary, rough wooden structures according to sketches. Must have tools of the trade. A state of Maine Class C driver's license and three months experience are required. Jobcast is brought to you by the Career Center, Maine's employment resource, and Rio's Family Restaurant, where family and friends meet on Sweden Street in Caribou. You're a safe driver, but how are you about sharing the road with cyclists? Remember that cyclists have the same right to the road as cars do. Share the road. Yield to cyclists. When turning, yield to a cyclist as you would for any other vehicle. Never cut off a cyclist. Slow down and give a cyclist at least three feet clearance when passing, and never honk your horn at a cyclist. It could cause them to swerve into traffic and crash. Before opening your car door, check for a cyclist. Same roads, same rules, same rights. Share the road for a healthier Maine. All new, shot in cold blood. He pulled the trigger, left for dead, and you went to visit him. If this happened to you, could you love the man who did it? She says she does. From inside prison, her attacker responds. Everybody, first of all, wants to know. Then, it was the bombing that struck fear around the world. She barely survived. Her heart stopped three times. Yep. The decision that saved her. It's amazing. Next Oprah. Weekdays at 4 p.m. Hi, Sean. Hi, Shane. I'm here with sports, so okay. let's get started. For the first time ever, Kingswood Park in Fredericton is hosting a national tournament. Sports director Rainy Kluke is in New Brunswick this afternoon and has more from the Internet. Some of the top collegiate golfers in Canada spending the next few days in Fredericton at Kingswood Park as they battle for the Canadian Collegiate Championship. The golfers had a real challenge today as the winds picked up, and that forced the scores to be a little bit higher. I hit the ball well the whole way around. It was made those par fours a lot longer on the front nine. Anyone that went out before us had a great advantage. Um, some of the par fours I wasn't hitting into because I couldn't get it there, and I was hitting great shots into them. I mean, you look, I hit number three. I hit an eight iron from 140. And I turn around number six, I hit an eight iron from 110. Christina Spence of the University of Victoria is the women's leader. She came in with a 74 and a two-stroke lead over three other golfers. You know, 74 is still a good score out there in the win today. So um, I didn't realize I was leading. So I guess I'll take it then and just improve on that. The University of British Columbia has won the event three years in a row. But Victoria right now is just four strokes back. You know, I'm second-year law student at UVic, so I haven't, like I did four years at the University of New Mexico, so this is different for me, totally different, because I'm only here for a week with the team, but I, I know enough of golf in BC to know that UBC's won this too many times, yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> UVic would love to, to steal it away from them this year, so that's definitely our goal this week. So. Spence, the British Columbia amateur champion last year, competed in New Brunswick and Moncton and finished in the top ten at the women's amateur. I remember New Brunswick very well yeah. last year, so um, it's kind of nice for me to come back to this province and know that I've played well in Moncton and, and know that I, you know, I'm 24, I have a lot of experience, so that's probably my biggest tool this week. And no, so the course is in tremendous shape. I'm by bad lie out there all day, and it's because I put myself in a fairway bunker, so it's in great shape for this time around. I mean, we only opened a month ago. And after one round of play, Victor Selinski leads the way with a 3 under 69 today. Darren Roach from UNB came in at even par tied for ninth, and Dax Phillips from UNB is also at one over par tied for 16th. On the women's side, Spence leads with a two over 74 today. It's in the home stretch for the softball and baseball teams. Here are the standings as of today. Class B, Caribou in fourth, and Class C, Holt in sixth. For Kent, 10th. I had to take a breath. I couldn't breathe for a second. Class D, at least I can keep going on with this sports cast. Ashland in first leads the way. They were in action today. Fort Fairfield, fourth. Southern Roostic, fifth. LTS, MSN, Katahdin, Central Roostic, Van Buren, and Woodland, six through 10. Softball Class B, 11 teams make the playoffs. Press Giles in third. In Class C, it's Holton and Hodgson and Madawaska just sneaking in at 11th. And in Class D, it's Van Buren, two. Katahdin, GHCA, LCS, MSSN, two through four. Southern Roostic, seven. Wisdom, nine. Woodland, Fort Fairfield, 10 and 11, Ashton 13, and Central Rustic just on the outside looking in at 14th. For a baseball game from this evening in Holston, the Shire Town has improved to 12 and 2 in the year as they pick up a 4 to nothing win over Caribou under the lights. On to some action from this afternoon in Washburn, the Beavers hosting the top seeded Ashton Hornets. And hey, watching the game from the stands and in the cars, a new invention. Pretty cool. I've never seen that before. At the top of the first inning, Tyler Cody gets caught in between first and second base, and the Beavers execute the rundown perfectly, but check out the infield single here by the Hornets. He'd be stranded. No score at the top half of the first inning. 
We have no score of that into the newsroom, actually. Going on to the next game, meanwhile, in Fort Fairfield, it's Dogs Day as the Madawaska Owls tangling with the Tigers. And in the first inning, the Tigers looking to take the lead with a runner on second in the single here into right field scores the Tigers' first run of the game, one to nothing for Fairfield on top. Other half of the inning, and the Tigers pick up the strikeout here, and the Tigers go on to win the game 7-3. Jake Kennison picks up the win, striking out 10 in the process. Ian Toll hit a two-run double in the game. Those two same teams on the softball field and in the top of the first inning, the suicide squeeze works to perfection for the Owls of Madawaska as they pick up the first run of the game. To the bottom half of the first inning and Lady Tiger Brooke Chassie with the bloop shot that falls in front of the left fielder. She turns on the extra push and legs it out for the nice double. There was a good big crowd on hand there this afternoon and Madawaska goes on to pick up the 14-5 win. Stefan Nato went 3 for 5 with 2 ribbies. Ashley DeSeer went 3 for 4 with 2 ribbies for the Owls. Back to Washburn now for the Beavers and Hornets softball matchup. And here we have Whitney Flint with the fly ball that drops in for the single and left scoring. Macy Pelkey from third. Ashton leads in this game early on, one to nothing. And the Hornets go on to pick up the 14-9 victory. Andrea May won four for six with a home run in the game. Going to the scoreboard, GHCA over Hodgson, 14-4. LCS MSSN beats Fort Kent by two, 18-6. Casey Brunner with a home run and two doubles. Hodgson over GHCA in baseball action, 12-1. Hodgson is now 6-9 on the year. Limestone falls to Fort Kent, 13-8 in the game. Prelim tennis results, boys, Madawaska blanks and blanks Dexter at love, 5-0. Fort Kent, 4, Callis, 1. Fort Kent next plays Penquist on Thursday at 1. On the girls' side, Van Baron beats Stearns, 3-2. The Crusaders next play George Stevens Academy on Thursday. So the quarterfinals look like this. Fort Kent girls host Sumner, 9 a.m. Thursday. The Boston Red Sox, they continue their hot season. They win 4-2. The Yankees lose 3-2. It's 14 and a half games between first place Red Sox, last place Yankees. Not looking good. Not looking good. <laughs> we'll be right back. Come back. This is a public announcement. Last year, the Wall Street Journal stated that almost 4,000 foreclosed homes sold for less than $1,000. Some experts believe that the number of foreclosures this year will increase by 20 to 40 percent. Government and private banks are liquidating these homes now. If you currently rent a house or apartment, you may call now to get a list of these homes. All others may call tomorrow. Every house must be sold. This is a public announcement. Call toll-free 1-800-746-6003. Join the Caribou Lions Club three-person golf scramble at the Caribou Country Club Saturday, June 9th with a rain date Sunday. Benefits will go to the Children's Diabetes Camp, Lions Eyeglass Fund, and Lions Scholarship. There's over $1,300 in prizes with longest drive and closest to pin contests. Call the Caribou Country Club and register today. Sponsored by S.W. Collins Company, Northeastland Propane, Reno's Family Restaurant, Frederick's Southside Restaurant, Dead River Company, Stainless Food Service Equipment Manufacturing Incorporated, Highway Tire, and Caribou Trading Post. Warm weather has arrived, and Fort Kent Skidoo has exactly what you're looking for. Check out the new line of pontoon boats from Godfrey, along with Polar Craft Fishing Boats, Johnson, Evinrude, and Yamaha Outboard Motors. See all new 2007 Sea-Doo Watercraft, as well as Can-Am ATVs. Fort Kent Skidoo carries all the parts and accessories you'll ever need, plus they service everything they sell. It's all at Fort Kent Skidoo, by St. Joseph Street in Fort Kent. Are you thinking of putting on a deck this summer? Then you don't want to miss the Super Saturday Deck Sales event at the SW Collins Company. We've bought truckloads of material to pass on the savings to you. Choose from the most durable deckings, pressure treated, cedar, or composite decking like Breck Deck or Trex. Stop in this Saturday during our Super Saturday Decking Sale and receive a free computer deck design. We're your decking headquarters. Go where the builders go for decking, the SW Collins Company. S81 School Farm is prepping for summer and planting old and new crops. Kara Lorson has more, Sean. Okay. Farm is preparing and getting ready for the summer season. Strawberries and blueberries may be summer crops, but they are planned well before summer. The gearing up for spring and summer actually starts in the wintertime um, with, with several classes sitting down looking at what successful crops were, what were not so successful, and just basically coming up with a plan as to what we're going to target this year. The majority of the farm's work is from high school students during the school year, but when school is over, that's when they get the most work done. Buzza says basically because of better weather. 
However, the students continue to work hard. The school year, you know, we get random classes that come up and then do what's relevant to what's going on in the classroom. But summertime is is probably our time that we would really shine. Uh, we get we get about 40, 45 students, um, depending on the interest, to come up and do everything from hand weed to scallions to picking all our strawberries to, to actually running machinery, mowing, tilling, weed whacking. The school farm has 25 different crops with a few new additions this year including plum trees, 12 honeybee hives that pollinate the crops, and the other buzza is classifying as the unknown educational crop. Popcorn's a, a unique crop because um, once we dry it, you just put it in a brown paper bag and put it in the microwave and it pops right off the cob. So it's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a neat crop that's not grown in Aroostook County. I don't know if it's grown in Maine, uh, besides novelty places, kind of like what we're going to try to do here. Buzza adds the corn will be harvested near the 1st of October and ready for popping November or December. As far as those favorites like strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, apples and pumpkins, everything's status quo. Carol Lordson, News Source 8. All those berry shunts are making me berry hungry. <laughs> you just were telling me how hungry you were a few minutes ago. We're going to go home and eat. Yes, food. We'll be, Sean's yeah. actually cooking me dinner when we go home. Yes, I, I will do that. A I don't know if you'll make course, it back. A lasagna. Long. Good night. Good night. <laughs>supply of drinking water is a precious necessity of life. We all use it and we all need it to survive and thrive. Tampering with a public drinking water supply is a federal offense. Vandalizing drinking water facilities or water sources could mean a huge fine and a lengthy jail sentence. Remember, crossing this fence could put you behind this fence. Help keep Maine's drinking water safe by reporting any suspicious activity. Because Maine's drinking water is our water. Let's keep it pure and secure. If you're a small business or restaurant owner, you know small business and restaurant loans are difficult to get. Who can you go to for up to $150,000 in working capital in as quickly as seven days? You call Merchant. Merchant provides money to all types of small businesses, retailers, and restaurants against their future credit card processing sales. If you have Visa and MasterCard sales from your customers of $5,000 or more per month, you may be qualified to get up to $150,000 in working capital. Use the money to buy more inventory, advertise, expansion, pay taxes, and more. There are no closing costs, no application fees or financial statements needed. We approve 90% of all qualified applications, and you can typically receive the funds in seven days or less. Call right now, 800-509-2163. 800-509-2163. That's 800-509-2163. Call now, 800-509-2163. All right, we are back on the box. Here we go, green, green, green. NASCAR on WHM Fox 8, proudly sponsored by North Country Auto, Acadia Federal Credit Union, Highway Tire, Big Cheese Pizza, Quigley's Building Supply, Mechanical Services, and Crown Equipment. The Inside Edition, weekdays at 5 on WAGM. CBS Thursday, the epic adventure begins. Pirate Master premieres Thursday.